What is going on everyone? So in this week's video, we are gonna do a composition review of the photos that I shot on my fall trip. We're gonna take a look at the photos. I'm gonna share my thoughts on what was going through my mind as I was setting up the photos. Uh, show a little bit of what I did to work with them in Photoshop, uh, as well as share some of my thoughts of how I view them now. So let's go over to the computer and see what we've got. All right, so let's start by taking a look at my favorite photo from the trip design. Uh, now this is a scene that caught my eye because of the really cool V shape there and then this V shape here. And they're offset which had kind of a nice diagonal flow. And when I was setting up this composition, one of the things that uh, really drew, drew my attention as a negative thing was this really big crack right back here. Now when viewing the photo, it doesn't really stand out at all, but when viewing it in person, it looked like this big glaring thing in the background. And it's really interesting the way that that works out. I think in two dimensions, it blends in with the other branches and you don't really think too much about it. Uh, but it was definitely a very glaring thing in person. Now the tricky thing with this scene is I was photographing between a dead snag of a tree over here on the left and this really big dead pine tree over on the right. So I had very, very limited access to where I could stand. And then also up in the corner, and if I uh, zoom out here just a little bit, uh, up in the corner, uh, you'll actually see in the uncropped version, uh, there's some really bright area right up there. So I'm also pinned against the sky. Uh, so I have, I'm kind of pinned in here against the, uh, against the sky, a dead tree, and a dead tree. And now one thing that kind of bugged me when I was setting up this composition, and it still bugged me after the fact, was a proximity between this tree right here and the side of the frame. I felt like there was not enough space there on the left side. Now, as you're viewing this right now, I've taken care of that. Uh, I'm gonna show you what it looked like originally. This is what it looked like. And so even when I was setting up this composition, I knew that there had to be something I can do to work with that because this was bugging me just a little bit. So all I did is I compressed this area in the middle and then, uh, which allowed me to slide the tree over and then expanded the left side of it. And so this is what it looks like after I did that really minor tweak, which I think just makes it, uh, takes away a little bit of the visual tension that was on the left side of the composition. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off all my adjustment layers so you can see what the original scan looked like. Now keep in mind that when I scan the film, I'm not trying to match the film, I'm not trying to match the scene, I'm just trying to get as much information as I can in the bright and the dark areas uh, so I can use it kind of like a raw file. So this is gonna be how the original scan looks like. It's not super pretty, but I'm trying to hold detail in some of these dark areas over in here and some of these light areas over here. And the film had a natural blue cast and you can see how the tree turned out quite blue here. And that's something I really wanted to minimize. Uh, so I started with a curves adjustment to warm things up a little bit. I dealt just a tiny bit with a the contrast there, but not a lot. I found that by doing both the curves and a levels adjustment, I was able to better deal with the contrast on this scene. So I'm getting a little closer. Um, so we're getting a little better with the contrast now, but still the saturation is quite dull compared to reality because this had like this really vibrant color. Uh, so next thing I did was a photo filter just to warm things up a little bit. In this case, I'm looking more at the trunk of this tree here and trying to reduce the really heavy blue, blue cast on that. And then finally, hue saturation to bring the color back to about where it should be. And the final thing that bugged me on this was how bright this area was in the background and it was taking attention away from the trees. So I did a curves adjustment with a layer mask and I just used it to selectively darken down that area as well as back there just to put a little more attention on the trees themselves. But uh, this was definitely a scene where as I was shooting it, uh, the spacing on the left bugged me, but I knew I could probably take care of that in post. I knew it would probably go a little cool in color. Again, I could take care of that in post, uh, but I really do like the way this turned out and it gives me the feeling of being there and looking at it in person. So next up will be this unit here. Uh, so this ended up being a little bit of a tricky one, both for shooting as well as editing. Um, so I'll take you to uh, the version without the cloning. So if you look over here, there's this really bright spot and that was bugging me so much. Uh, it's like you're trying to read a book but there's a really bright light just beyond the book and it's just pulling attention away from the book. 
And I tried all sorts of things, but ultimately found that when I was re reviewing the film, if I just covered up that little bit, it really just made it so much nicer to look at. So I did a clone job and I took some areas from over here, here and here and recreated that area. So there's without and there's with. I try to keep it as natural as possible. Uh, as far as the rest of the edits, I'm gonna turn off all my adjustment layers there. So we're going back to the original scan of the film. And again, this is a low contrast and rather subdued saturation uh, version of the actual scan. Just trying to hold detail in the shadows and in the highlights and everything else. Uh, so I did a, a curves layer there, which did most of the work, uh, warming it up a little bit, uh, as well as restoring some of that original contrast from the film. Uh, this next hue saturation layer, this was a little bit tricky, but what I found is that some of the red leaves had a tendency to go a little bit kind of pink and kind of magenta in a little bit of a distracting way. You can see especially up over here and here. And so this hue saturation layer, all it's doing is making magenta a little bit closer to red. So you see when I turn that on, uh, those leaves blend in a little bit more. It's really, really subtle. Uh, we'll zoom back out there. I did a hue saturation layer just to restore a little more of the red in those leaves to make it a little bit more like the original film. Um, some of the blues in the background were bugging me. It felt a little unnatural. And it's, it's kind of a hard subject to work with in that regard because film has a mind of its own. Um, but this one, I tried to tame some of those blues. Uh, I changed the hue of blue just a little bit and desaturated a little bit to keep it as natural as possible. Uh, but still one thing was bugging me, which was the brightness of the background compared to the tree. And so this final layer here is uh, just to darken this area around here. And by doing so, it places a little more emphasis on the tree and a little less on the background. And I think it gives the background wall a bit more natural contrast as well. Now when setting up this composition, uh, I was just trying to make sure I had a nice spacing uh, on the top of the tree the left of the tree, I'm trying to keep it pretty, pretty equal, the right of the tree. And I wanted to make sure I included enough of this foreground slope here to help ground the composition because one of my regrets after the fact is not including enough foreground. So I always, go, I always try to add a little bit more than I feel is necessary. And by the time I see that on the computer, usually it's just the right amount. Uh, I really like the slope here. And also another thing, you might be curious, some of you might know the answer to this, but you might be curious why we have this really defined uh, bottom of the tree that slopes according to the hillside there? Well, the answer is deer. That's as high as it can reach. So that's why it prunes it in that really, really interesting way. And that's, that's also why um, these hillsides of maples are really interesting because uh, they are pruned trees by the deer. And so it has a very, um, it looks like it's in a, a garden or something, which is, which is kind of cool. Um, but the other thing too with this composition was I have this encroaching oak tree here on the right and that's the reason that I was not able to tuck this bright spot behind the tree like it did to that other spot. Because um, otherwise if I would have taken a, a step off to the side I could have tucked this behind the tree but by then this oak tree would be um, covering up the maple there. So uh, just some minor tweaks but the main thing was darkening that a little bit and then uh, doing my best to sort of tame the film and bring it back to reality as much as I could. Uh, so next up, so here is the photo of the box elder that's down in the Slot Canyon. And when I posted the video for this, it's interesting, and also when I posted the photo on Instagram, uh, many of you guys mentioned how you liked that the uh, curve of this branch matches a canyon wall and the curve of this branch right here matches the canyon wall. When I was setting up this composition, I did not notice that. Uh, what I was paying attention to was again, the space up here, the space right here, and most specifically how this trunk right here matches up with that light colored section in the background. Because I knew that these leaves are gonna blend in with the wall. I figured the best I could do to make this tree stand out was to make sure that the trunk stands out from the background. And so I moved my camera, you know, a half inch to the left, a little more to the right, just to kind of get that specific placement so that this trunk was right up against that section all the way up to the top there. So that's one of the things I was actively paying attention to. 
Um, I thought when I was setting up this right here, this bush might be a little bit of a distraction or this stuff might be a bit of a distraction, but they're not. It plays into the overall feel of it. Um, so let's go ahead and take off all the adjustment layers and show you what the scan looks like. So uh, when I scan it in the software, I do the actual uh, conversion of the negative into a positive using the Epson software. But you end up with this really weird color contrast flat image. And so this was the best I could do using the software. But I knew that it still needed a lot more work in Photoshop to get it there. I was just trying to make sure I had detail over here in the shadows and good detail up there in the highlights. So the first thing, first thing I did was a tone adjustment, which got me most of the way there. Um, trying to restore some of the dark adjustments. Did I say tone adjustment? Curves adjustment is what I meant to say. But it is a tone adjustment with curves. Uh, but yeah, so I'm trying to make sure I have uh, good detail over here in the shadows, detail in the highlights, and try to restore some of that original contrast in the scene. Um, then I did a levels adjustment in addition to that to help further refine it because I didn't have quite as much control as I needed with the, the curves there. Um, then color balance, this is really minor, but I felt the color was getting a little peachy. So I did um, color balance to uh, reduce sort of the peachiness and establish some more of the kind of the greens and blues and stuff to the scene. And then finally I did a, a hue saturation layer because these leaves, those are my reference point and they were uh, a decently saturated yellow. And so this got me back to that. So that's um, before and that's after. Just a minor tweak to sort of get me in the neighborhood there. And one other thing that you might not even notice, but I noticed it after a little while. If you notice there's a bright spot right up here and I think that was actually a minor light leak. Uh, probably when I was inserting the film holder or inserting the dark slide or removing the dark slide. And so I did a levels adjustment with a uh, layer mask there just to cancel that out. So this one worked out pretty well. Definitely happy the way, with the way this one turned out. Um, again, it was giving the foreground a little extra space, paying attention to the edges um, and paying attention to where I had placed that trunk. Uh, but the alignment of these branches and how it uh, it sort of uh, mimics the canyon wall. That's something I was not even paying attention to at the moment. And then finally, uh, so here is a photo of the uh, maples set against the wash there. And uh, this was a really cool scene to find. Um, I really liked the contrast between, um, in both in terms of color and in terms of texture between these boulders down here and then the leaves up there. And then the way that some of the fallen leaves are sort of uh, in the middle there and it's kind of tying these two worlds together. Um, I liked the fact that we have sort of a natural uh, diagonal emphasis there, then there and a little bit right here. So it's like it's kind of growing and sprouting and kind of flowing, I guess you would say. And uh, if I, I go to the crop tool here, I'll show you what my original uh, film composition was because I did crop this one in just a little bit. I had to crop a little bit off of this side over here because just outside this frame uh, there was just some awkward dark areas over there. So I pulled uh, that side in just a little bit uh, just to make sure that I'm ending it right at the actual branches here. Otherwise it felt a little bit awkward there. So. A minor crop there, nothing all that big, but just to fine tune that far side there. Um, also worth mentioning, uh, this is comprised of two different scans of the same sheet of film. So if I take off all my adjustment layers here, here is the original scan. And again, it's gonna be a little bit on the dull side, a little bit on the less saturated than the reality side. And I did a curves adjustment now, I realized right away that if I adjust the curves for this top area, uh, this bottom area here gets blown out. And that's the reason why I scan this film a little bit darker, a little bit lighter, and I have both those scans incorporated into one. So here I'm really just paying attention to the top. And then I do a uh, hue saturation to try to get these colors back to reality. Uh, but this was getting blown out down here and getting kind of bright. 
So I now have a second image. Uh, so the exact same photo, just scanned a little bit darker. And in this case, I have a layer mask over here. And uh, I've, I just put this darker image down here. And then I have to work the curves a little bit to restore some of that contrast. Uh, I did a hue saturation to uh, increase the saturation of the, the warmer tones just a little bit so it matches the top. And then I did a photo filter, which is gonna be just a warming filter to help reduce some of the blue cast on it. Um, but I was pretty happy with the way that this composition worked out. Um, it's kind of a 50-50 split, but getting the harsh rocks down there, the leaves up there, filling the frame with chaos, but at the same time, there is a bit of a flow to these branches. I just loved how uh, all the leaves are different colors. It showed all the different colors of, 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 this, uh, of this tree, the greens, yellows, orange, pink. Another thing that's really interesting is I photographed this exact same tree before, um, but I was up high on the wash looking across at it. And uh, that particular photo is also one that I really do like. So it's kind of cool that you can go to a place like Zion, photograph the exact same tree, but the photos turn out completely differently. But overall, it was a pretty good crop of images uh, from the trip, though it took me a little while to, to warm up to some of them, uh, especially uh, this one right here, which actually became one of my favorites. And then this one here was also one of my favorites there. But uh, yeah, so that way you get a feeling for what goes into this in terms of the Photoshop editing, my thoughts when I was setting up the composition, as well as after the fact. But I wanna thank everyone for watching. I'll see you around next time.